Hello, Michelle. How are you doing? Hello, Elisa. And Eric says, hi, Mom. And I was just going to so say hi to you, too, and say I love you. He loves you, too. All right. So uh, as per Michelle's um, request, we're going to uh, try to bring in, if you can, Eric, Corey Heim, uh, who is a, was a child actor in, uh, I, I don't really, I'm not familiar with him, but I looked uh, up a picture and he's adorable. So can you do that, Eric? He is a, yeah, um, Corey's here. And um, hi, Corey. He says, hello. He, he's called you uh, Dr. E. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Well, thank you. Hey, Dr. E. Aww. Um, he's so Corey, just to explain that um I started getting some some signs, and this often happens. I've said this before, before yeah. somebody comes forward to channel with Eric, I'll have a lot of little synchronistic events and signs that they're around. So this will be my third time that I've communicated. me little bits and pieces but he is he is a very sweet soul um he and eric are standing really close together right now and they've got some common interests like motorcycles and girls Aww. and all Aww. kinds of things that they're they're kind of yeah conversing about but um cory is showing himself in a vest like a black vest he's got a white t-shirt um, pair of jeans on and he's just he's got a very boyish charmed type look to him Aww. and um very very handsome I would say he's showing about early 20s okay. what he looks to be so he's just yeah. he's just saying hey to everybody um he says that he's done this circuit he's not uh or he's familiar with communicating in the afterlife okay so um he's not his first rodeo yeah. Well, do you, first rodeo. All right. Do you want to start off just like, open mic time and just, uh, is there anything that you want to set the public straight about, or do you want to offer your story about it? Anything, your life, your death, anything? Well, he says, thank you. Um, he says that he, he loves to talk. Um, he loves to converse. But a lot of this, he says, it's not so much about my life in particular, but what he represents from the afterlife and how that affects those on earth right now. Yeah. He's talking about this being um, timely, that it's a timely conversation on many different levels. He wants to bring awareness to, um, okay. He says the events that have taken place in Hollywood, um, mm -hmm. he says, not just at my time, but even well before my time, he says, not just in Hollywood, but around the world. And what he's speaking of, he says, is child abuse, um, abuse against men, women, and children. But he says, in particular, um, sex abuse, sexual yeah. abuse. Mm. And he says that. He appreciates having this opportunity to speak, but he wants to make it understood that he's not coming from a place of needing healing for himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. He wants to, yeah, he, he wants to express that this is part of his purpose, that he's comparing himself much to Eric, and he says, Dr. E, much like your son. I have an opportunity in spirit to be able to help earth, to be able to help those on earth that have suffered and continue to suffer. Good. And to let you know that you're coming upon a very changing time. And in fact, you're in it. And there's much evidence in the world right now to what's dark and what's scary to come apart first to anybody that's been directly affected by sexual abuse um, whether it has affected them themselves or somebody close to them that they love and he wants to be able to say you can be free 
you can let go of the responsibility, let go of the shame. He says that this is a time of healing and understand that we're coming into a time that is unknown to us. It's an energy that's unknown to us. And we have this opportunity to be able to take advantage of the energy and advantage of our ourselves. He says our own power to be able to stand up for who we truly are and no longer live in the shadows of dark choices and of control of our minds. We are no longer victim to somebody else's bad choice. So he wants to extend his love and his appreciation to all those that have suffered and continue to suffer to address that first of all. Wow, that's awesome. So I feel like there's something changing too, like all the stuff with the with Pizza Gate and you know, um it just seems like things are are coming out. There's more evidence. The whole Epstein, the whole uh, Harvey Weinstein, all that kind of stuff. To me it just I feel like that part of the deep state, you know, uh, and the global elite pedophile rings um they're, they're i think they're they're about to be cracked hopefully he says yes um he goes that's exactly what i'm talking about he said that we can look at this look at this as there are multi levels of um breaking down that is happening and we can look at any he says arena any sector of the world of any of these major platforms, foundations, businesses, governments, and we can see different areas that are breaking apart. And he says, this is all very timely. He's also putting, um, um, he's pointing to his, his friend that he had in life Corey Feldman, yeah. Who also, yes, yeah. He also suffered sexual abuse. And so he's just saying, guys, I'm not here to talk about names. I'm not here to talk about judgment. I no longer need that healing. But what I want you to understand is that I want you to really look at, he's saying, rather than the meat and the potatoes he's saying the meat and the mashed potatoes of everything Uh that's going on here he says i want you to look at what the subject matter is and not focus on the judgment of whether my buddy has made money off of what he does or whether he's gaining popularity or anything of that nature because he says let's put all these judgments aside and let's look at we all know that there is something and has been things going on for a very long time and it is timely he says there has been a blanket that has covered a lot of the world and there is a lot of safety that we've lived in in what we've not been able to see or what we have felt is far away from us who who are the soldiers in the army that's going to correct all of this or at least hobble it? Who's behind saying that it, huh? he says let's not call this um like one team. He he's not referring to it as one team, he's referring to it as um groups, as cells, intels. Okay. Um yeah. it's like group from different parties or different areas he's saying around the world yes because of he course. Says just yeah. focused in the u.s mm. that there are other countries and he says that there are groups within each country that is allowing this to happen and so this is being broken down in what he's calling a timely and divine timely fashion and so- well who's helping in the u.s Who's the main? Oh, okay, he says. Sorry, go ahead. Well, who is helping in the U.S.? I hear that Trump has done a lot of like executive orders. I don't know, forming this and that uh, again uh, for 
to stop sex and child trafficking. Uh, is he one of the soldiers in this fight against this horrific thing? Um, he, yeah, Corey's just saying that a lot of people want to put so much blame on Trump. Um, he says, let's not mix up. Let's not mix up what we want to believe about somebody based on some things that they say. And let's look at the fact that he is there for a reason, more than what we're able to see as humanity right now, right in this very moment. And yes, so he does have awareness and he does have, um, he's saying, um, power to conduct whatever it is that they're doing but it's not happening at one time he's showing me like it's like you pull this domino and it's going to affect this one over here okay and then this it's going to affect this one over here so what well, eric said go. i'm sorry mm -hmm. all right so eric said uh you know i have a lot of questions so i can't um, um, be mm -hmm. too long on each uh, answer um, Eric, a long time ago, said that Trump was brought in by the divine to topple the corrupt. Is this one of the main reasons the divine has brought him to us? This whole child abuse, uh, pedophilia and all that and trafficking? Yes. Yes, okay. there's one of them. All right. Um, there, he's, just, he's, just, he's just agreeing with you and saying that um, because he's showing me a lot of fingers being pointed and he says that um there's a lot of fingers that get pointed at him to build him up to look and act a certain way so that there's a lot of um hate against him yeah the media i mean is the media complicit i mean parts of it obviously uh complicit in all this trafficking and pedof pedophilia and all that in some way is, is that why no. they keep it so remember that there's some high yes yes there's there's higher up um so you will notice Corey says that um you'll sometimes see that something will come out in the news and then it will be something shocking or people want to understand what happened to the rest of it and then all of a sudden it drops off and they move on to something else that happens yeah. he's talking about it um it manipulation comes in many forms and works on many different levels but there has to be key parties within every sector to be oh, able yeah. to keep it going and that yeah. has happened for a very long time all right so are you saying the 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 top levels of the media are trying to stop trump because they are they are complicit in 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 this part part part, part yeah okay not all oh yeah of course not um did you always want to be a, a an actor a child star He goes, nah. He goes, I would have much, I would have much rather be a hockey star. Aw, were you good in hockey? He says he'd like to think so. He was swift. He was All um, right. like good. light on his feet. He was quick. But now you can do it anytime you want. Play hockey on the surface of Mars or whatever. Uh, what did you like and dislike about, these are from blog members, about your occupation? Yep. <laughs> first thing he goes to is that he says um and he does this with this dimple he goes that he loved the attention oh he loved, he loved the fans he loved yeah. the girls um he just loved all of that stuff and he said that he was good at it he, yeah it wasn't something he went out to find it was just something that he was good at okay so what did is what's the one thing you did not like about the occupation oh, well beside the obvious okay yeah mm -hmm. um he said that there was some discipline that he needed so it may have been a little easier when he was younger but he said there was a, a lot required of them oh, gosh, and yeah. there would be times that he would stay up and party or he would um prefer That was hard. Um, he says the downside to it, he goes, obviously, yes, we all know what, what a big part of it is. But he says, other than that, he says it was hard being pulled back into reality. So he oh, says yeah. that you know, he, he had his fall. 
he had his times that knocked him down, but it was yeah. hard for him. He had some impatience with it. Um, and so he says for that, once he had lived that sense of stardom and fandom, he says that it was, it was difficult for him to readjust. Okay. Uh, what advice would you give to children and their parents about putting kids into the um, entertainment industry? I know Elijah, some say Elijah, would, um, he was very protected by his mother, wouldn't let him go to the parties, after parties and all that stuff. But do you have any advice? He says to stay informed, uh, stay as present as possible, and always have somebody that you trust that's able to fit in for you, Good. that you feel confident with. He says that, um, you know, children are working a lot of times in an industry that has adult expectations along with it. And there are times that some of these kids are so mature with how they handle things that that can be easily forgotten. So yeah. having that right protection with your child for as long Protect as their necessary. innocence, their childhood. Good. Um, were you abused before you even entered the entertainment industry or was that when it first happened? And he says, no, he, he didn't suffer any type of abuse. Um, before he got into the entertainment in his industry he's talking about the combination of what was around him so marijuana and some other drugs and those scenarios he says some of the scenarios that he was put in um i guess there was like parties yeah parties places that he was that he wasn't in those same type of situations beforehand okay so was there one main you don't reveal any names obviously one main person who was your abuser there was more than one can you tell me about not in graphic detail of course the first time was it a casting agent producer i mean somebody a director um, Age, he's, age. he's calling calling them a guardian is how he's describing it um he says a guardian with um so work duties and he's calling it off work duties so had some sort of care with him um as far as the details of the abuse he he pulls his energy right back. And oh says, no no no! Of course not. No yeah. no. I don't want to yeah. be voyeuristic. So anyway, it's kind of like a, one of them. The, the first one was a chaperone of some sort. Then is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's he's calling it a guardian. He keeps repeating okay. a guardian. So I get some to care for only one. So How old were he you? Was not the only one that. Yeah. Was. How old were you? 13. Okay. What did you think? Were you scared, horrified, felt ashamed? I don't know. I mean, what was the, one um, of the bigger emotions? He says, he says it, it, he's calling it a mix of um, uncertainty. Um, he also says, and he means this in a very non, um, like he says he was young. So it was confusing for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of he course. says he was bringing forth his hormones and sexual feelings. Yeah. But he says also with an understanding that it felt like it wasn't something that he wasn't sure if it was something that happened at a certain point. Like he didn't see it coming in this way, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, He's not really putting a whole lot of detail on. Well, it, we don't want to. It's yeah, that's fine. Uh, all right. So this one person uh, writes here. Uh, what the hell is Corey Feldman doing and thinking with? I don't know anything about this story. With all his accusations and craziness, he seems to think he's involved in. Does he actually know anything about the pedophile ring in the entertainment uh, industry, or is he just full of it? 
and attempting to make money and fame at yours, your family's, and other people's expense. Is he mentally ill on drugs or just greedy? He even talked trash about your mom and sister. His behavior really pisses me off. He, se he seems to think he's better than everyone else. Okay, so I don't know what you want to say about that. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything, but except that you're not here to judge Corey. We should not, et cetera. But what do you want to say? Yeah. He's, he's repeating what he said earlier, and he's just, he's just saying that he can appreciate that. He can appreciate that opinion because he says everybody has the right to their opinion. He says, I'm not dogging you or telling you that you can't think this way, but your opinion is yours. But he says, what I want you to understand is that there is, um, Corey believes what he's doing. He goes, and when that man wants okay. to do something, that man does something. And whether there are other things to it, he goes, yes, yeah, so what? Maybe there is some other things to it. He goes, he has the right to make money and he has the right to do other things with it as well. However, he says, don't forget that he is also a victim of abuse. Yeah, that of course. That he is also part of this. So yeah. he says at the same time that he's bringing me into this and he says, and he's not brought me into it in a way that he feels he is doing something wrong. Right. So he says, I will make it clear that his intention is not thinking that he is doing something wrong. And he says, so you have to remember that everybody has a perspective and he is also a victim. He is she also part of this. Um, um, yes. He says with other abuse as well in his life. So he is a victim at the same did, time. Did you guys know each other were being abused? Did y'all just, and if so, did you discuss it? Yeah. Yes. He says um, it was no secret. It was something that we carried within us. And Corey says it's not, a, it was not a secret amongst people that he knew as well. Um, Corey didn't necessarily talk about it with everyone. And in fact, He's saying that his conversations with the other Corey mm -hmm. were few and far between. Okay. So uh, it wasn't something that was focused on, but it, it was understood. And yes, they did know each other from yeah. um, children. Did, did um, y'all discuss maybe reporting it to the authorities? Um, Corey's like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't relive it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I understand. He's saying that the other Corey handled that. So he may have gone to the authorities at one point or he may have reported it. Um, but Corey Haim is pointing to him and saying like, um, this is part of his whole build up to this is he was called crazy. Okay. Or he was like yeah. something was wrong with him. So do you feel that Corey Feldman honored um, your, his uh, promise to you? Someone wants to know. I don't know what the promise was, but did he? He's saying, he says, let me answer it to you this way. He believes that, that he is fulfilling exactly what I asked him to do in the way that he processed it, yes. Okay. And he said, and with that, that's okay with me. Um, do you have any messages for him? He says, keep, keep being passionate, man. Okay. Keep being passionate. If what Corey Feldman has put out there is all true, why is your mother saying it's not? And why is, your mother trying to discredit him? Those two different questions from different people. Mm -hmm. um, he says his mother is recovering. Um, he's actually calling it spiritual recovery for a oh, lot of yeah. what's happened and what continues to happen. Um, he's addressing specifically with going against one or the other and how he's putting it is that he supports his mother a hundred percent, but he also supports Corey and he wants to point to truth will unveil itself in the correct time. Good. Good. 
what effect will Corey Feldman's documentary have on the entertainment industry? I didn't know that there was one. I guess it's on uh, child abuse, sexual abuse. Um, he says it's a piece of the puzzle. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, let me see here. Did you regret having gone into the business in, in Hollywood? He says no. No. Okay. He says part of your um, spiritual mission. We'll get to that too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's what he's saying. He says this yeah. was um this is my life path. Yeah. Uh will anyone else speak out against Charlie Sheen? I didn't know that was part of it. He's answering it with there will be other um, allegations or other victims come forward. All right. Uh, have you had a past life with Corey Feldman? He says yes. Oh, tell us about it. And is that um, is that the uh, the life that most influenced your one as Corey Haim? Yes. Um, interestingly enough, um, he's showing them both as brothers. They're both male. Oh. Um, they're like indigenous or in a um like a a native um i can see them in like it looks like native wear mm -hmm. um their hair pulled back very long and dark and the two of them are learning from somebody or learning about patience about trust um he says that in this lifetime it was about learning patience it was about learning trust. It was about learning about, um, he says brotherhood, but in a circumstance or in the lion's den. And he says that they learned about it in a different way in this other lifetime. He's talking about a different type of danger. What was the danger? Um, in that lifetime, it was like physical danger from other um, like you show bows and arrows, like oh, okay, and, other tribes and stuff, right? Uh, animals, big animals. Oh, so uh. relating it to the types of animals. When, they, when was this? When and where? What continent and what um, century? Um, he says North America. North America. Um, So he's showing like around the U.S., actually U.S. and Canada border in that okay. area. Um, Seventeen. Okay, 1700s-ish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how did you die? I'm sorry, I don't know your story at all, but did you take your life or were you killed? And it looked like I said, no, no, he was actually sick. Um, oh, he says that, that that was his exit point. Oh, uh, he he says that he was okay. His body was very tired. He's calling oh, it. Yeah, his yeah. body was very overexerted. Um. He says he put himself through a lot, put himself physically through a lot. Mm. And he talks about having a weakened heart or a weakened, a weakened heart. <laughs> um, he says that he had an illness and it was the combination. And he also says um, he had some mental stress at that time. Yeah. Um, some, like some stress that was affecting his physical body and yeah. becoming ill and he said that his heart stopped oh did you have pneumonia or some, some infection thing going on he says yes okay um did you have uh, any addictions in your life he says yes Yes, that would be some of that really hard stuff on my body that I did. I was wondering, yeah. So what was your drug? Of, uh, how old were you when you started using 
substances and what was your drug of choice? Pill. Pill. Like what like kind of pill? Uh, he says uppers, things okay. that would get me going up, things that would get me going down. Um, um, opiates. Okay. And uppers. Um, meth? Uh, he's not saying meth. Okay. No. So mostly yeah. like Oxycontin, things like that. I mean, you know, that sort of Some thing. Some alcohol. Alcohol. Some alcohol. Things like that. <clears throat> Was that part Marijuana. of your life journey? Oh, yeah. Was it part of your journey to battle addiction? Your life it journey? Was, it was a, um, he's calling it from choices. So he says it didn't have to be what it was, but it was a product of the choices that he made. So a manifestation of the choices. His life journey, personal had to do with forgiveness oh. um, but it, what he did what he did with that um, he was experiencing the results of the choices that he made that were his responsibility yeah so the drugs or was that you self-medicating yourself from the pain of of the trauma yeah, yeah I figured yeah. Um, did the assaults change the tra tra trajectory of your life obviously and made you go into addiction and, and you know a, substance abuse etc right he says that it created an underlying sense of grief within yeah. him so um he says my inner child was always battling a sense of grief so as much as i could smile and be happy and charismatic on the outside i had this deep sense of grief on the inside of me that I didn't know how to help. I didn't know how to take care of. And so the best thing to do was to numb that out. So grief usually entails a loss. Was your loss the loss of your childhood, of your innocence, or was it something else or many things maybe? He says, yes. He says, yes, ma'am. It was the loss of my innocence. Aww. He says it was, it was the loss of trust um loss of trust in others it was the foundation inside of me had flipped around and i felt responsible i felt that i needed to do something about how i felt and i didn't know how to it's yeah. not that i didn't try because he says i did try but well, he's also just oh, God, sorry he, he said he's just adding that this was um, part of what his, I um, was talking about his contract or his agreement or how, however we want to define it, had to do with his soul making a choice to exit, to be able to do some of the work he does now from his That's spirit sad. aspect. Yeah. Will those in Hollywood ever be held accountable? And, you know, for sexually assaulting and child actors, and I bet you anything, Shirley Temple was probably one. Oh, you don't have to comment if you don't want. But he's just saying he's saying yes. Um, many childhood actors and actresses yeah. that we would um, that we watched grow up yeah. on screen have been affected by this, and he says that there are numbers that will come forward to help indict or to bring forward. Um, he, he's not saying all, but he's saying it depends on what you consider is punishment or. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, were you sexually assaulted when you filmed the movie Lucas? If yes, by whom? But don't say it. <laughs> but they want to know. But. <laughs> he's just he's holding back a little because he says that that's a, a tricky implication um but he's saying during that time there was abuse yes okay um why did you decide to drop out of school and did you regret it later in, in your life uh he says he 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 was good at what he did when he, he wanted to focus on what he was doing. Yeah. Um, he's, 
talked about making movies was like a lot of fun. He said being on set was a lot of fun. There were times in his life when he was, um, he says, I'll call them some of the lower points or some of the points where I didn't feel that I was too secure, that I would look back onto my what it would be like had I have done that. Here. But he says they were moments. They were fleeting oh, moments. Yeah. I didn't dwell on that. Okay. What made you sell your molar on the internet? Um, didn't know that happened. He says cash. Meaning okay. cash. For drugs? Um, it's, it's, so you were having financial trouble, really? He said that he did go through a lot of money. Okay. Um, and he's talking about being able to support staying well in the form of supporting his habit. Oh, okay. All right. Are you and Corey Feldman twin flames or kindred uh, spirits? Or maybe just part of the same soul family. I don't know. Yes. He says that's exactly it. He says soul part family. Of the same. Yes. Okay. Did you enjoy doing the reality show later in your life or did you regret aspects of it? He said there was a lot of good times. Um, he said they were necessary from um, his aspect now. He can understand how necessary a lot of that time was and it was helping bring him to opportunities in his own life. But furthermore, it's what it did for Corey Feldman. Oh. It was. Um, he's talking about it, being able to open him up to do a lot of what he is doing right now and, and will continue to do. So was Corey Feldman part of it, the show also? I, what was it about, too? I mean. He's showing link, linking arms with Eric. He's saying about two brothers. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, was it about sexual abuse and being child actors and all that? Or was it about what? Sorry. About, about being child actors, sexual abuse, things like that? He says no. Oh, okay. Um, I'll look it up. It's but he's seeing a reality, reality show. Oh, okay. What was your uh, relationship like with your father and your mother? And, and until this all happened, did you have a, a happy childhood? He's, he's going, yeah. He says, I love my parents. Um, I love, I love my mom. I love Aww. my mom. This is my own strong lady. Yeah. This strong woman. Did you um, have, oh, go ahead. Was he's just data? saying that his, his family split apart. So there was a, a split or a, um, a divorce. Okay. Um, but he's not indicating having an unhappy childhood he's giving me a sense of um, having a very average childhood and, um, and not liking the divorce or not being yeah. happy about it, but oh, of course not. he's not calling it, um, it's just traumatic for the kid I was at that well, age, but yeah, about how old were you? Because of everything that occurred in his life. Yeah. Uh, how old were you when that happened? Um, he shows a little bit older. Okay. Well, that's okay. We don't have to get. Yeah. yeah it feels like, it feels like he's already past his teens. Okay. Or... Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. When, when was your, oh, how do you get along with your dad or how did you? Um, he says, okay. And he just, he's showing that his mother was more of a, um, he told her everything. He was closer to his mother. Um, he says that he had, he's calling it like he bump heads with his dad sometimes. Uh, he says he loved him. Okay. He, he still loves him. Um, but there was, I don't know if his dad had like um, another marriage or had another, like had a new family or something. So just, he's showing me I like see, just yeah. not always being right and jive with them with yeah. his dad yeah all right so uh when did you you i for, didn't get an answer i don't think uh when how old were you when you first 
started uh, doing drugs or alcohol. Besides marijuana, yeah. But he says 13, 14. Okay. He's leaning more towards 14. Okay, now let's see. Uh, we've got the, the usual list. Your, so your spiritual mission was to bring attention to the pedophile rings and all that stuff and um, all the nastiness of the deep state. On a, right. on a collective, on a collective level. Yes. Right. He says, um, uh, layers of that, but he's also talking about, um, about bringing attention to drug abuse, oh. bringing attention to, um, abuse of any kind, uh, any type of abuse that anyone suffers, whether emotionally or physically and, um, how not being able to identify it or accept it in your life how many people lead to self-medicating with drugs, alcohol, and other forms of addiction. Yeah. He said that part of the attention that he brought on a mass level with his, um, with who he, who he was. Yeah. Right? And uh, I, I think what you mentioned is you were here this incarnation to learn how to forgive. That's a big one. That's, that's yeah. gotta be hard. To, to trust and forgive. Yes. Did he you had a hard time retrust like trusting people? Did you accomplish that in this lifetime? While you he were said, alive? Or the one that the the trust and forgiveness that I was really meant to be able to have was within myself. Okay. Ah. So he says, with that, um, I did not fully accomplish that in this lifetime. No. That's okay. Said, what was the next one? Hey, listen, you want a good childhood? Just you come as one of my grandkids and I will just spoil you and protect you. Okay. Deal. He says, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, what insights did you have when you crossed over? Were you like, oh my God, what's going, where, yeah, tell me about that. He says the unity, the, um, he goes, the, uh, he loved to talk about, um, when he was in his physical body, uh, he liked to converse and talk about what people thought about things into these deep conversations. And he said that it was, um, he's not calling it shock. He's just calling it the revelation of unity, meaning oh, wow. that everyone's God is the same. It's, it's, doesn't matter what you call it doesn't matter what names you put to it or what traditions you put to it that it's all about us it's all about our true true spirit and about love that really connects us and That's he right. says that um, that was a really he's calling it um an embracing an embracing revelation that's awesome um can you share anything that essentially no one knows about you. Like I keep using this as, as an example. Madame Curie said she used to sew a little teddy bear on the inside of her skirt. So um, do you have anything? Like when you take your socks, do you, do you sniff <laughs> them? Or I don't know. Any, any funny thing. Eric, Eric just goes, no, that was me, mom. Yeah. Me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Um, Why would you uh, torture yourself? Oh, yeah. He says, oh, Eric, an addictive smell. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's funny. Okay. Um, so Corey just says, he goes, well, Dr. He, he goes, I'll, I'll be honest with you. He says, I was an open book. He says, I talked about everything. I shared everything. Okay, good. I mean, so no, no fun so secrets. There, there really is nothing that anyone wouldn't know about me. Oh, okay. Or at least some people. Any last messages uh, that you want to give humanity or any individual? It doesn't make any difference. He says, guys, I just really want you to know that there's going to be and is a lot of information that is flying all over the place right now. And you're hearing it from every direction. And he says, your currency, your power is truly your discernment. So keep in mind over this next, everything that you hear 
don't follow the leader. Don't get your information because somebody said so, or somebody, somebody is up there and knows it. He goes, go into yourself. Yeah, on the TV screen. It. Yeah, on the news. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Says, Listen to your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, right, so that, he goes, that's what's creating what the world is becoming, is your own discernment and what you think. Good. So, um, you know, the Fall Cabal Deep States YouTube series I've been watching by Freed Freedom Media with just Freedom Edia, actually, it says, uh, about the sex trap. Is that all true? Or most of it? He says, yeah, he says a lot of it is. Wow. Y'all watch that on YouTube. It's amazing. Gosh. All right. Well, thank you, Eric or uh, Michelle. Do y'all have anything to, that you want to ask Corey? Thank you so much, Corey, for joining us. Um, oh, uh, Corey and Eric are going to jam. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're talking about jamming together, but as far as questions, um, I always draw a blank when you say that because I've heard so much already. But um, overload. Yeah, no All right, yeah. that's fine. All right, you guys. First of all, I love you, Eric, Corey. I love you too. You're gonna be my next granddaughter and grandson. Mm -hmm. Love you, Michelle. You granddaughter, granddaughter. <laughs> and you, you I'm gonna dress <laughs> you up in funny little thing, cute little pinafores. No, I don't know. Uh, so y'all get in touch with Michelle at thehealingh.art.com, which I'll put right here. I promise. All right, y'all, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, share and subscribe. Por favor. Bye, everybody. Bye. Love you. Love you.